There's something about being in a room where at least 99% of the people are smiling. Please welcome. You ready? Coming to the present moment. Instead of being unhappy about the past or worried about the future, living in the moment, appreciating all that you are being bestowed with, then you feel grateful. Hello, sir. Great to see you again. He, uh, when he, when he just saw me, he said, "Hey, you're you're shining." <laughs> Isn't he? <laughs> He's glowing, actually. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now, how how many people do you meet that tell you that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, how beautiful of a thing it is for you to say to someone, but that it it speaks to who you are, and and it speaks to the energy that you bring, the, the kindness, the love, you're about uplifting people, and it's, it's so beautiful. I mean, I felt like I was shining, but you confirmed it, I appreciate that. <laughs> when I came in, there is a sense of joy uh, in this building and, and those that, that work with you. How, how would you define your joy and your happiness? Now tell me, why should we define joy? Mm. Why should we define everything in life? You see what I'm saying? In fact, joy defines life. If you are happy, that defines our life. Because as a child, we were a bundle of joy. So it's our very nature, isn't it? And some way, it gets covered with all stress and all the stuff we, you know, accumulate. Very true. Mm -hmm. So, at, at those moments, because you're right, we're born with that natural sense of joy and wonderment. How, how can we practically, you know, find our way back? What, what, what tools can we apply? Yeah, we need to get rid of stress. We need to know, see, neither at home nor in school, we are taught how to get rid of our negative emotions, right? Mm -hmm. It's normal to feel upset, normal to get upset, normal to feel anger, jealousy, you know, all that host of negative emotions. But there should be a way to press the delete button. Mm -hmm. In our computer, we do have a delete button, but we have forgotten. So all that we need to do is to teach our people how they can handle their mind using their own breath. You know, our breath has a lot of secrets to tell us. Because for every rhythm of the breath, there is a particular emotion attached to it. And if we learn a little bit about our breath, there, then we don't feel helpless when we feel in all these uh, storms of emotion. When I met you yesterday, uh, you were so kind and gracious with your time. I appreciate it. Uh, when I left, you had instructed your team to walk me through his breathing technique. <laughs> now let me ask, if, have, if, has anyone here practice the breathing technique that he developed by raising hands. Okay, so I was the last one. Okay. <laughs> it changed everything for me. It, it described exactly what you're talking about. I was instantly happy. I felt the, the blockage, you know, the gunk. It was cleared away. Paying a little bit attention to the breath every day, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I would call it as like dental hygiene, mental hygiene. Mm. I like that. Mental hygiene. Why is it so hard for us to do that sometimes? I think you just tap it there. It's not working. But you can, can you hear me? Oh, wait, I can. 
Now this will count now. Check, check, check. Ah, ah, there it is. That's it. Just needs a little patience. That's it. <laughs> you see? You saw it real time. No, no, no. I need something else. <laughs> Practice a little patience. Okay. Yeah. I get it. Have I'm faith, learning. Have faith. Faith. Things yeah. will work. And it works for us. That's right. Isn't it? <laughs> yes. Right. Deep breaths. A little bit of faith. Yeah. You know, there are so many creatives in the room. And uh, there's, there's, I think, unique sets of challenges for us artistic folk because so much of, of what we do and what we create is dependent upon the acceptance of others. Others, yeah. You know, I, I found it challenging at times to keep my confidence, to believe in myself. How, how do we... How can we build a practice of knowing that we're walking in our purpose? See, in real life, we have to see uh, everything is a play. Curtain is going to come down one day. So whether you're successful or you're a failure, there's one, only one place you go that's under the ground. Horizontal under the ground. That's for sure. All the successful people have landed there. And all those who have failed have also landed next to them, side by side. <laughs> right? When we remember this, anyway, everything is going to come to an end. There is no point in being anxious. Oh, so what? If you don't do well in one movie, so what? That's not the end of it. And you will see in everyone's life there are some failures and some success. Beautiful. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. It's, it's so easy to get caught up in the outcome, you know? But I want it to do well. I want my, like I'm being a songwriter, I want my song to, to be heard by the world. I want it to hit the top of the charts. And oh, yeah, yeah. It's good to have that competitive spirit, good to have that intention, but not being feverish about it. When you have to go somewhere, say you want to go to Santa Barbara, what do you do? You just sit in the car, you drive. You don't keep repeating all the way through Santa Barbara to go to Santa Barbara. <laughs> you will land up somewhere else. <laughs> So, an intention to succeed is good, and that's good enough, it will take you there. But being feverish about it, I tell you, it, is, uh, it will land you somewhere else. I agree. Uh, very well said. You know, I, I had a moment in my life where I had achieved what I thought to be the pinnacle of success. I was receiving these awards, but I was unhappy. Yeah, you got so many Grammy Awards. Right? I, well, that wasn't for you to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, my, but my point is, is that in, in that moment, you know, I had thought about that moment so much and I had, you know, strived for that goal. But so much of my personal life was in shambles. And my relationship with myself and with my higher power was disconnected. I wasn't able to, to enjoy it. And I realized that You I, was once lost, now you're found. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a song in there, isn't it? <laughs> yes. So how, how can we keep that from happening, you know? That's where we need to learn something about ourselves, who we are, you know? The body, breath, mind, intellect, memory, our ego, and something beyond these that doesn't change in us. If we can latch on to that inner self, inner uh, beauty of yours, nothing whatsoever can shake you. Nothing can take away your joy, your happiness. <laughs> I, I, was, I was watching a, a beautiful video uh, of you and you were talking about your relationship uh, as a child with your grandmother. And, you know, I know all of us come from varying kinds of families, some close, some not so close. Uh, some of us in the artistic community, we have, you know, families that we choose. 
How, how important is it for us to nurture um, these relationships in our lives? I feel that you don't need to try to nurture any relationship. If you are free from stress, naturally we'll be compassionate. Naturally we'll be friendly. These are embedded in our nature. Virtues are embedded in us. We don't have to go somewhere and acquire them. But what we need to do is to learn to let go and let it be and see life from a bigger perspective, a broader perspective. Life has so much more to offer to us and life is much more than what we think, you know. Just a few appreciation from here or there. Just, just turn back and see, you see. Whatever has happened till this moment, is it not like a dream? Huh? Some were nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> but nightmare also passes and a beautiful dream also has gone. Right? Could this be dream? An hour later, two hours later, it will all be gone from this place. Can you see the future also? Could it be a dream? Another 20, 20 30, 40 years, whatever time we live on the planet. So when we step back and see the whole drama, you shift yourself from being an actor to being a director. <laughs> and you are able to appreciate and even make a difference. See, it's the director who changes, right? He has all the power to change, bring about the change. And that's what happens in our life. Instead of being shackled, in a role or in a limited arena of activity, we step back and see our life, we'll be able to appreciate it much more. And that is when we get connected to that something in us that doesn't change. And that's all beauty, it's all love. And it opens door for another level of existence the doors of many other dimension in life gets opened. I feel that life begins only there. <laughs> wow. That's beautiful. <laughs> so, so it's almost as if we should try to be the observers of our lives as, a per, as opposed to the participants all the time. Time and again, we should take that role of observer. I'm not saying you should be mindful all the time. No, don't. Why do you have to be mindful all the time? It's such a stress to be mindful all the time. <laughs> These days there is a new fade. Oh, do, do it everything mindful, mindful. You don't need to be. You're not a monk to be mindful all the time. Yeah, monks do it as a practice for some time so that they can remain there all the time. But you don't need to do that participate in life, but time and again realize you are just a witness. And that gives you enormous strength. Mm. It saves you from being in a burnout type of kind of situation. Wow. <laughs> wow. He's dropping dimes. That's what we say. He's up here <laughs> dropping dimes. Man, I love it. Well, I think we are going to open up the questioning to our audience. Why do people want the attention on themselves rather than what's going on around them? Why do you think that people are doing that? To get more likes, to get more hearts, to get more comments? What is your take on the social media aspects of that? You know, attention brings a sort of energy. It just boosts one's ego, one's self-confidence. If one is not aware of the inner power of oneself, one depends on attention, energy from someone else outside. And when they cannot excel in anything else like music or art or something, they want to do something to draw attention. You know, kids in home do. When the guests come, at that time only they want to come and take your attention. The whole day they will be playing, but some guests are at home, and they come with their paper, Dad, look at that, I made this painting. <laughs> they have to show it in front of others. So because the, the attention brings energy to an individual. And so 
all the tantrums thrown by people around or only to draw attention it goes away by more maturity as a person grows they realize their inner power you don't need to depend on attention from someone else beautiful anyone else hello hello <laughs> such a pleasure to be here so um my boyfriend is um a really really talented businessman but it's really difficult to get him to a spiritual event before but before i left this morning he said i need you to ask the guru this yes <laughs> so i'm going to ask the question for him so he wanted to know why you felt that so much of the world is in turmoil right now and what could us people that aren't in touch with the politicians the governments what should we be doing to make this a better world right now thank you absolutely absolutely we think just the politicians will be able to make a big impact on society if you talk to politicians you know they feel helpless they see the people who are like that what we can do you go and tell the people you know each one of us have some power with us our thoughts are powerful right so our intentions are powerful so we should stick up the stand i stand for peace of course we all but it is somewhere hidden in our subconscious mind bring it to your conscious awareness say i stand for peace number one and then let me see what all i can do see today people are getting depressed and suicidal can you imagine 400 doctors in this country committed suicide in this year it's unbelievable people are supposed to save lives taking their life away this is happening on the other side there is aggression at the drop of a hat people are ready to fight and take the gun and shoot see what's happening in this year more than 200 instances of shooting you know it breaks our heart to see so many parents weeping in texas so we need to take some stand that people don't swing to these extremes and let us create awareness for non violence and let us reach out to all those sad faces and say hey come on why are you sad what is the problem here is a solution come there is no problem that we cannot resolve through dialogue through counseling through techniques when you teach them proper techniques of breathing people come out of this depression tell your boyfriend <laughs> it is possible you stand for peace and you talk about it to everyone around you that's right i love that jay guru dev i was just wondering whether our creativity is predestined in birth or whether the infinite intelligence can flow through us and maybe give us talents at any moment in time and how that might connect to overcoming any creative blocks that people might be experiencing how many of you have this question is life is all destiny or will can you raise your put up your hands you know i'll give you a simple uh, example your height is your destiny but your weight is your free will <laughs> so life is a combination of destiny and free will you can't change everything about your life if you are 5 feet 6 inches and you remain that but if you are 200 pounds you can definitely come down to 150 <laughs> to get rid of our uh, blocks uh, creative block writers block these things come you can't just sit and wait or oh, some day something will happen to me it's my destiny no there is something you can do and what you can do meditation meditation unblocks all that stuff that clogs our creativity at the same time you need to be patient i can't say i want to be creative right now and this hurry to be creative takes it longer to be creative i remember we were working on our third album 
And the second, the first two albums did really, really well. And there was a great deal of pressure to outdo those two albums. And we had this period where every day we showed up, we said, we gotta write a hit song today. Today has to be the day. And guess what happened? It never happened. <laughs> And so you're so right, you know, be, it was, it was when we forgot about it and we got patient and we switched to just say, let's just keep showing up. Let's see what happens when we show up. So that's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yes, in the, in the white. Thank you so much. I wanted to ask for words of wisdom for all of us uh, on the topic of grief, as we've all been through so much and our hearts are also heavy. Can you remember the days before you got into the grief? You were not born with grief. You had joy before that. And after an incident has happened, it has caused pain, it has caused so much suffering in you. But you know, life continues. When you look at the life of so many other people, who are in the same boat like you. You see what I'm saying? That also can reduce your individual pain. When we are so close, when we are thinking only about ourselves, our pain becomes too big. But when we see that pain is there in the public in a lot, in, in a bigger way, then you say, okay, what I can do for them? Engaging yourself in the suffering of others to help others can reduce your own suffering. Number one is one thing. Second is knowing that the curtain is going to come down, the play is going to end, and the rest of the play, let me make it more joyful. This determination from yourself, coming to the present moment, instead of being unhappy about the past or worried about the future, living in the moment, appreciating all that you have been bestowed with, which are deprived to many others, then you feel grateful. When you shift your focus to what you already possess and feel grateful for it, it can help you to get over the grief. And the third thing is, uh, I would say, breathing exercise and meditation. Actually, this is the first one. <laughs> <laughs> that can help you to right away get over. So the question that I have is I'm totally with you on the aspect of doing the practices so that you cultivate peace, joy, radiance within yourself. And that being said, there's still certainly environments because of the impact and conditioning of colonialism, the patriarchy, that can be really contracted spaces. I'm sure we can all agree that this dismantling, this crumbling of the patriarchy, of the impacts of colonialism would help us live in a more peaceful, harmonious world. And what are your thoughts around helping accelerate that? Yes, there's divine timing, and it would really help if that would happen, yeah, yeah. you know? So what can we, what can we do to accelerate yeah. that? Yeah, sometimes when you hear about joy, peace, bliss, and all that, it sounds like a la-la world. Hey, come on, this is okay, it would be fine in, the, in a meditation center when we step out there in the world, it's so hard. And it's, people are frowning at each other, hardly anyone smiles. If we are a little late in the traffic and someone is honking behind us, all this sort of thing happens, rat, rat racing is happening in the world. How can we match these two things? This is a, a practical question here. You know, dance cannot happen if both your feet are buried in the sand. One feet must be up, only then a dance can happen. Both feet up, you will fall on the ground, you cannot dance. So we need to see the practicality and imagination. As uh, people from the field of cinema, movies, you all know, it's imagination which takes you forward. It's imagination that has brought the science to us. Every scientific discovery has began with an imagination. So let's imagine a beautiful world. Let us keep an intention towards a beautiful, stress-free, violence-free world. And you will see that it starts manifesting. When I first came to LA some 35 years ago, 
I wanted to teach the breathing exercise and course and we had announced and there were about eight or nine persons who came for that. Whereas I was teaching in, in Canada, we had 100, 200 people join the program there. So when I came here, there were many people here advised me, don't come to California. Here everybody knows, it's all saturated with everything. So it's waste of your time. You come all the way from India, spend so much money, and here it's your time is wasted. Everybody knows, nobody will listen to us. The second time I came, almost same thing happened. There were hardly seven, eight people who showed up. You know, I didn't give up. I said I kept coming. And then we had centers from San Diego to Seattle. Everywhere people are doing practicing. Millions got benefited here. And see, we have a beautiful center. Here in California, we taught about 3,000 juvenile offenders. You must listen to their experiences. What transformation they underwent in their lives. And then we did cities for peace here in California, in the city of Pomona, where the inner city uh, group, some of the gangs members, and the police force, when they came together, they started breathing such a big, uh, ice-breaking situation was there. There was so much of harmony and love and forgiveness among the people. So all this work is possible because you believed. At the same time, we have to be practical. Inside every rude person, there is a beautiful person hiding. <laughs> They're just waiting to be unveiled. Yeah. Love it. Uh, let's see. I see a hand up in the back there. I think as artists with the platform that we have and that the fact that it's always growing, there's this uh, pressure that's put on us, whether that's internal, that's to be placed on ourselves, or external, um, to be the rightful spokespersons of the communities that we represent, to have a stance on what's happening socio-politically, and to lead people in the right direction. Uh, and I say that to say that um, having a spiritual practice sometimes takes us away from that and allows us to be checked out from what's going on. And because of that, some of us have guilt and shame for being checked out uh, with the social political issues and how we must show up for that. So how do we balance having a spiritual practice and um, managing some of the guilt and shame that comes from stepping away from uh, the work that's ahead of us in regards to radical change? Thank you. Let, let's make clear here one, one thing. Being spiritual does not make you inactive or docile, or it doesn't even take, uh, make you complacent with injustice. You have to stand for what you think is right. You have to do that. But being impulsive, emotional, and you burst out in fit of anger is not going to help you to achieve what you want to achieve. Violence is not the means to achieve anything. Nobody has ever achieved anything through violent means or impulsive behavior or an emotional outburst. They are impediments for you to achieve what you think uh, is justice. And spiritual practice doesn't make you weak and docile. I tell you, I repeat that. It gives you so much strength. See, Mahatma Gandhi fought against but he never uh, lost his temper and started yelling and shouting and lost his way. He is a thorough example, Martin Luther King. He was a very composed person. He had such a spiritual sense in him. And that spirituality gave him strength to fight against corruption, fight against injustice. We in Art of Living did the same thing. We stood against corruption, against terrorism. Don't think that inactiveness or passiveness is spirituality or aggression, just mere aggression is activism. No, you can be active being centered. You can be firm and soft. So I would say there is a combination of sensibility and sensitivity. Often people who think they are very sensible, they are not sensitive. And those who are sensitive, 
they are very mushy mushy they are not sensible so emotionally in embroiled all the time now we need that central path middle path that is what spirituality is all about it brings you that it makes you strong and yet soft love it you know if if i could add to that just it's hard to add to that but <laughs> if i could just add a little something yeah when i got sober that i mentioned earlier and and started to have a spiritual life and connection on a daily basis i started to know who i am and i started to get more confident in who i am and i think that much like um the guru was saying here is the more we know about ourselves the stronger we are and the stronger we are the better impact we can have on those around us at least that's that's what i've seen and the spiritual practice of meditation every day and now with the the added this breath work that i'll be doing daily crazy and insane lovely beautiful keeps my spirit in a space that it's more focused than it was before so i think that they don't have to be interdependent much like he's saying yeah absolutely absolutely okay i do see a hand right in the back Hi. Hi. <laughs> there are some situations where there's a pattern of, of very negative behavior and I have not figured out yet that fine line with the boundary setting because I have so much understanding why somebody gets triggered and behaves in a certain way at the same time for example in in the business in the in a job when you work with somebody and you cannot just take um off and let it be you have to navigate through this what is your advice on how to how to best deal with people who struggle who operate on a pattern rather than complete choice in that moment and for us who want to help them do we step back can we help them somehow how do we set boundaries and <laughs> Oh my god do find such people all over the place <laughs> and it needs a skill for you so that you don't get into the same pattern if you can save your mind and be spontaneous at that time see there is not one way that you think oh when tomorrow that guy behaves or this lady behaves this way i'm going to do this no and in fact if you even if you decide at that moment you will forget you won't even remember what you thought you how you should be so i would say you have to just be strong and cultivate patience understanding within yourself and be spontaneous at that moment if you lose your temper never mind if you been little rude to people never mind because when we when we are sometimes harsh and then we start regretting and we start blaming ourselves then we prepare ourselves to be more miserable and have the same reaction happen again and again jai gurudev gurudev i'd like to ask about forgiveness i have my own journeys where i try consciously to practice forgiveness forgiving others i think i've achieved it and then something triggers me again and it sets me back to that anger inside and then i feel like i'm back to zero like a game of snakes and ladders and the other aspect of forgiveness aside from forgiving others is forgiving myself forgiving for, forgiving myself for bad choices or decisions or actions that i didn't do in, correctly in the moment i'd like to understand from your wisdom how can i achieve that better how can i get better at forgiving myself and others you don't hold on to a nightmare nor you hold on to a beautiful dream you realize it's a dream and you move on in same way in life events incidences happen they will happen and they're gone what's the point in holding on to them coming to the present moment and realizing our spirit is eternal spirit is 
uh, always new, fresh and resilient can help us come over that. Second thing is, you know, mistakes happen in ignorance, in unawareness. When you are not conscious, you have done mistake. When you are conscious, you must believe in your innocence more than your uh, unconscious uh, actions. Forgiving others, don't struggle, don't need to forgive others. Why do you want to forgive others? You want to forgive others because it's bothering you. When you see from a broader perspective, the person whom you want to forgive, you think they are culprits. And when you see from a broader vision, angle, you'll see that culprit is also a victim. They are sick. Do you get upset over uh, people who are mentally ill? No. Every culprit is a victim. They're not in their best of health. Mental health, spiritual health, emotional health. So they only need their compassion rather than forgiveness. One last question will go. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, your philosophies are absolutely beautiful. And I just wanted to see, just in terms of when, as you grew up, where do you draw your philosophies from? Because, I mean, everything that you've said today has resonated and just to see where you get it from would be would, would be great to see. I mean, it's, it's something that, it's, it's so tough to understand how you are able to understand life so well. Oh, yeah, I tell you, that's a great secret, okay? <laughs> and it all comes from the same place where from every poem has come, every innovation has come, from where Newton has drawn his law, from where he has brought up beautiful music. And it's the same space. And that beautiful space is what uh, is more concrete than what all we see as a manifest world. So going there is meditation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Gurudev, Surisi Ravi Shankar. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and your wisdom, my friend.